Bismillahirrahmanirrahim <coughs> وهو معرفة الله سبحانه وتعالى. In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate, praise be to Allah, and blessings and peace be upon our master Muhammad, his family, companions, and all those who follow them. And amongst the 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 things that Allah has graced the human being with is the capacity in the human being to come to know Allah. وجعل له فطرة في ذاته أبدعها سبحانه وتعالى وجعلها صبغة خاصة جعلها فطرة وصبغة خاصة صبغة الله فطرة الله التي فطر الناس عليها صبغة الله ومن أحسن من الله صبغة ونحن له عابدون. And God gave the human being a primordial disposition. And a unique coloration um, that God Himself put, put, placed in the human being, as Allah says in the Quran, the the primordial pattern given by Allah, and as Allah says in the Quran, and the coloring of Allah, who is who is better at giving the coloring than Allah? <laughs> And God rendered the perfection of those things in, in our Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وجعل الله سبحانه وتعالى في فطرة الإنسان أمر يتعلق بالميول والمحبة فكل إنسان له ميول وله أشياء يحبها ويتعلق بها ولا يوجد إنسان ليس له ميول أبدا. And one of the things Allah put in man's primordial disposition is that the human being loves certain things and inclines to certain things. So there's no human being except that he has certain things he loves and certain inclinations. And every human being has people he venerates or holds in high regard and people he tries to emulate or copy whether that those people he copies are leading him to good or leading him to bad. And the nations that passed before had the merit of having perfect prophets and exemplars in whose path they walked and whom they emulated. ونحن جئنا بعد أن اكتملت النبوة باختتامها بنبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي كمل بيت النبوة وبيت الرسالة صلى الله عليه وسلم فلما نقتدي نحن بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نقتدي بكل أصحاب الرسالات كلهم في جميع مظاهرهم وفي جميع مسالكهم عليهم الصلاة والسلام and then prophecy came to its end, came to its culmination and its seal in our Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
who completed the house of prophecy and the house of messengership and whomever follows his example also implicitly follows every other prophet that came before in their ex modes of expression and in the parts that they, they, they left behind. And uh, the, the masters have mentioned a number of benefits in studying the description, the shama'il of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'll mention a few of them to you. فالفائدة الأولى من دراسة شمائله صلى الله عليه وسلم هو التعرف عليه والتعرف عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم يثمر المحبة له. The first benefit of studying the shamail, the, the description of the Prophet صلى الله the portrait of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is that one comes to know him. فالمحبة هي ثمرة المعرفة. And if one comes to know him, one will come to love him because love is the fruit of coming to know someone. And love is the foundation of faith because our faith cannot be perfected except with his love, blessings and peace be upon him. الفائدة الثانية هي الاقتداء به صلى الله عليه وسلم فكلما عرفناه كلما اقتدينا به The second benefit of studying the shama'il is that it allows us to, to it permits us to it allows us to emulate him صلى الله عليه وسلم for the more we know about how he was the more we can emulate him and how he was صلى الله عليه وسلم والاقتداء به صلى الله عليه وسلم يثمر محبة الله لنا and to follow his example sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bears a fruit. The fruit of following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that we become the recipients of God's love. And the love, God's love for the servant is the highest accolade that the servant can attain in this world and in the next. الثالث من فوائد دراسة الشمائل هو الشوق له صلى الله عليه وسلم. The third benefit of studying the shamail of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is it engendered it engenders yearning and longing for the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. والشوق إليه سبب في لقائه عليه الصلاة والسلام ورؤيته في الدنيا وفي الآخرة. And the yearning for him is the is a means for one coming to, coming to the point where one sees the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this world as a visionary experience and in the next. And the fourth benefit is the, the pleasure it engenders when hearing about his about his description sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and things pertaining to him because when one is in love with another person one one gets joy and pleasure out of out of mentioning them إذا سمع بخبر من أخباره صلى الله عليه وسلم تمثل شخصه صلى الله عليه وسلم فيكون ذلك أدعى له أن يفهم تلك القصة أو يفهم تلك الأحداث. And the fifth benefit is it brings into the into the imaginative faculty the ability to imagine the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in that situation. So when one hears those stories and the mention of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it generates something in the imaginative faculty allowing one to start um, visualizing how the Prophet was and how he was in that situation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa min al-azim fawaidi shama'ilihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa dirasatiha anna idha 
درسناها وإذا عرفناها اشتقنا لهذه الأخلاق ولهذه الصفات فإذا اشتقنا إليها توجهنا إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى في أن يعيننا عليها فيعيننا تعالى And one of the other immense benefits of studying the Prophet's description sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that the more one studies it, the more it will engender in one a yearning to also have those attributes and that character and the more one will, want, it will turn to Allah, asking Allah to allow one to have that character. And the science of the Prophet's description, his shama'il, is part of the science of the Prophet's biography. So we have a part of the part of the science that is to do with the events of his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one part which is to do with his campaigns, his military campaigns. And another to do with his, his marvels or his miracles, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one part, and part of it, the khasais, is to do with the attributes of election that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had. وفنون متعددة في العلم استخرجت من سيرته صلى الله عليه وسلم والشمائل من أهم هذه العلوم. So these are different sciences, different disciplines, all of which are derived from the Prophet's biography صلى الله عليه وسلم, and the, the distillation of them is the seerah, the 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 the, not the 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 shamah, the description of the Prophet, the portrait of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وعلم الشمائل يتعلق بالصفات الخلقية والصفات الخلقية له عليه الصلاة والسلام. And the science of the Prophet's shamail. Um, looks looks at the Prophet's character sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his outward form sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how he looked and how he was as a فيبدا بدراسة اوصافه الجسدية اولا so the shama'il begins by by describing how he looked physically ثم بعد ذلك ما يتعلق بأموره الحياتية ما يتعلق بأكله وشربه ولبسه وهذه الأمور البشرية. Then the second part pertains to his his uh, the aspect aspects to do with his life lifestyle, how he dressed, how he ate, how he sat, and and different things like this. ثم بعد ذلك يختتم بذكر الأخلاق. وهي الصفات الخلقية له صلى الله عليه وسلم. And the third part pertains to his character صلى الله عليه وسلم and how he was his virtues and so on. وبعض الناس لا يهتم بذكر أو بدراسة الصفات الخلقية الجسدية له صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو يظن أن ذلك ليس له فائدة كبيرة وهذا من الأخطاء الشديدة جدا. And some people don't pay much attention to studying the part to do with his physical description, thinking that that's not very relevant, and that's a big mistake. فإن الله تعالى جمع لنبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم جمال الظاهر وجمال الباطن. Because God combined in our Messenger of Allah صلى الله in the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم beauty of the outward and beauty of the inward. ومن العجيب الذي ذكره العلماء أن الله تعالى في القرآن ذكر كثيرا من أعضاء جسده صلى الله عليه وسلم. And one of the things the scholars mention is that one of the wonders that are in the Quran is that God mentions different parts of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran. Like when Allah says in the Quran, we see you turning your face towards the heavens. وقال ألم نشرح لك صدرك؟ and in a verse where Allah says, did we not expand your breast؟ وضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك. and we we took we took we lifted from you your burden and then Allah أنقض ظهرك. ظهرك. أنقض ظهرك. أنقض ظهرك. how would you translate it؟ أثقل أثقل. which which lifted the burden off your back. وذكر كذلك. ذكر عينه وقال لا تعد عيناك عنهم. 
And Allah also mentions the Prophet's eyes sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he says to him, and do not take your eyes off them. And when the verse says, and those who take their oath of allegiance to you, their covenant with you, take their covenant with God, the hand of God is over their head. وَذَكَرَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى قَلْبَهُ وَذَكَرَ عُمْرَهُ فَهُوَ قَالَ الْعُلَمَاءُ فَلَا شَكَّ أَنَّ هَذَا الذِّكْرَ مِنَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِيهِ سِرْ And Allah also mentions his heart sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his lifespan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The scholars say that no doubt those things being mentioned, there's a secret in why those things are being mentioned. حَتَّى كَانَ الشَّيْخَ الشَّعْرَاوِي رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَهُوَ عَالِمُ التَّفْسِيرِ الْمَعْرُوفِ فِي مِصْرِ كَانَ يَأْتِي فَيَقُولْ اللهم صلي على عين رسول الله اللهم صلي على لسان رسول الله لما يرى من آثار تجلي الله سبحانه وتعالى في جميع أجزائه صلى الله عليه وسلم and that's why Imam Sheikh Shahrani, the well-known Egyptian um, Quranic commentator, used to make salawat. He'd say formulas of, of uh, salutations on the Prophet, saying things like, Oh Allah, give salutations to his eyes. Oh Allah, give salutations to his tongue, and so on. Because of how he saw those things as its manifestations of God's grace to the Prophet ﷺ. ومن أجمل الأشياء التي يمكن أن يعيشها الإنسان في حياته عندما يكون عنده القدرة وعنده المهارة في أن يقيس كل شؤون حياته بمواقف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. And a person when he reaches people a person can reach a great level if he can get to a point where he can see his life in the light of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and see that. In every, he see in every situation how he can recontextualize his life to be aligned with the Prophet's life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. فمعجزة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الكبرى بعد معجزة القرآن ما هي؟ A rhetorical question: and what, the Prophet, what was the Prophet's greatest miracle after the Quran? هو أنه صلى الله عليه وسلم إنسان كامل. And it is that he was a perfect human being. ما معنى أنه إنسان كامل؟ What's the meaning of him being a perfect human being؟ أي أن كل المنافع وكل الفضائل التي يحتاجها كل إنسان يمكن أن يجدها فيه. Meaning that every good and every virtue that one could find scattered across the whole of humanity are found gathered in him. صلى الله عليه وسلم. فهو الوحيد في هذا العالم المؤهل لمخاطبة جميع العالم. And therefore, and he is the only one in the world who has the the capacity to to address everyone in the world. والله سبحانه وتعالى جعله كذلك مبعوثا للعالمين. God made him a, a messenger to be an envoy to the worlds. وهذا أمر عظيم. فإن اليوم لو تكلمت أنا ربما بعض الناس يعجبهم أسلوبي والآخرين لا يعجبهم أسلوبي. That that state of his salam is an immense state. Because if if someone if I was to talk today, maybe some people would like what I have to say. Others wouldn't. فلا يوجد أحد يستطيع أن يقنع الجميع وأن يكون مناسبا للجميع. So there's no one who can actually convince everyone and be appropriate for everyone. إلا هو صلى الله عليه وسلم فإنه مؤهل ليخاطب ليخاطب جميع الخلق صلى الله عليه وسلم. Except him, blessings and peace be upon him, because he is the one, the only one qualified to address the whole of humanity صلى الله عليه وسلم. وعلى قدر اقتراب الإنسان منه في وراثته. في علمه وفي أدبه وأخلاقه وعقله كلما كان أكثر سعة في استيعاب الخلق وإقناع الخلق. And the more a person is close to him, صلى الله عليه وسلم, in his demeanor, in his inward, in his intellect, and takes from him, the more he'll be an inheritor of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, and the more universal he'll be in his ability to address to address different types of people. فأكبر فائدة أتصورها يستستفيدونها من هذا الدرس درس الشمائل ودرس الإنسان الكامل هي فائدة المقدرة على فهم 
الاتباع له صلى الله عليه وسلم في شؤون الحياة المختلفة. And he said the great benefit for you to for you in your study in the Shama'il is to be able to study how the Prophet was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in all of the different affairs of life, in the all the different expressions that life that life requires. فهناك أمور بسيطة يمكن للإنسان أن يقتدي فيها بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مثل ما أن يشرب الماء باليد اليمين ويقول بسم الله مثلا. And there are simple things that a person can do in order to emulate the Prophet, such as to drink the water with their right hand and say Bismillah. And now to come to know the, the, the devotional worship, the ones beyond the obligatory, such as the Salat al Duha, the Witr, and such like, and devotional fasts and, and, and things like this. وهناك أشياء عميقة جدا. And there are things which are very deep, very profound. لكن لا يمكن للوصول لا يمكن الوصول إلى الأشياء العميقة حتى نأخذ الأشياء البينة الظاهرة. And one can't reach the 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 deep the deep inward things until one takes the the obvious manifest things. And takes them, emulates them, and, and, and lives them. فنجد بعض مشايخنا كلما تنسأله في مسألة في قضية من القضايا المهمة يأتينا مباشرة بوصف لها واستنباط من موقف من مواقف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. Our masters, when we ask them about different situations in life, we find that they derive a wisdom from one of the situations of the Prophet's life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and find an analogy to it as something from the Prophet's life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وهذه موهبة يهبها الله سبحانه وتعالى للعبد بعد أن يجتهد في الاقتداء بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الأشياء التي يستطيعها. And this is a gift that God bequeaths to His servants when they emulate the Prophet in the things that that they can. That they can emulate in it. ولهذا المسابقة بيننا والمنافسة بيننا في الاقتداء به صلى الله عليه وسلم. So therefore, we should hasten and race one another and compete with one another in in being the best one at following his example, صلى الله عليه وسلم. كنت مرة في ليلة من الليالي قريبا أبيت مع شيخي الحبيب عمر في في سفر في غرفة واحدة. A while back, I was uh, I was in a, I was staying in the same room as my master, Habib Omar bin Hafid, and we were sleeping in the same room. فصادف سبحان الله أن أنني في ذلك الوقت أعطاني شخص زيت زيتون جاء من فلسطين وقال لي تعطي هذا للحبيب عمر فقلت له أنا شخص أعطاني زيت زيتون لكم فكأن الله سبحانه وتعالى استجاب طلبك الذي في قلبك. So, and so he said, on that occasion, when, we, when I was in the same room as Habib Omar, Habib Omar s s expressed that he wanted some olive oil. And I said, Habib, when I was coming out to be with you, when I was coming to be with you, a person brought me some olive oil from Palestine and said, this olive oil is from Habib Omar. So it's like what's in your heart's already been answered. <laughs> أتأمل ماذا يصنع به فوضع الزيت على على بطن كفه اليسرى هكذا هنا. said and when I gave him the olive oil he said I I wanted to see what he was going to do with it and what he did was put some olive oil on the on the palm of his left hand. فأخذ بصباع أصبعه المسبحة فدهن حاجبه الأيمن ثم حاجبه الأيسر ثم دهن عنفقته ثم دهن عينيه ثم لحيته وبقية وجهه وأنا أنظر إليه وهو في خشوع فتعجبت هذا ليس الدهان هناك إتكات يعني. Hey, so he said, he said, حبيب عمر put the olive oil on his left palm, a little drizzle of olive oil on his left palm, and he took the finger with which he does the tashahud. And he dipped it into the olive oil, and then he started by anointing his right eyebrow, then his left eyebrow, then the the hair just below his lower lip, and then he 
he did his eyelids and then his beard and then the rest of his face. And I was looking at this thinking, what kind of etiquette is this for oiling oneself? He said, so I, I left it there, at that, I left the situation there as it was. But later on when I was reading the Prophet Shama'il, I read the description of how the Prophet used to oil himself and it was exactly the same thing that I'd seen Habib Umar do. Said, so I was, I was left um, awestruck by the fact that he was following something. He was following even in things that people could, could have oversights and overlook. You find people like that live a prophetic life in everything in their lives. And this is the greatest joy in this life, greatest felicity in this life. so, then, so the, 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 the greatest things you, you, can, you can get from the study of the Shama'il is that you'll come out with a certificate and the certificate is this, it is that you become able to tie every situation you face in your life with something from the Prophet's life. وهناك صفتين عظيمة جدا الذي يدرس الشمائل والذي يدرس الشمائل ينبغي أن يتصف بهما حتى يمكن أن يستفيد من هذا العلم. And there are two things, two traits that the person teaching the shamail and the person studying the shamail needs to actualize in order to benefit from this science. وهاتان الصفتان كانتا في أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وبسببها استطاعوا أن ينقلوا لنا كل شؤون نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم. And this, this, uh, this was the state of the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, and it's that which allowed them to. Trans, transmit to us and disseminate to us everything to do with different states of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's these traits that they had. That there's no human being in the history of mankind in which every intimate detail of his life was recorded and transmitted, not even in our time when people can be surveillanced and such like, no one has, be, has had every detail of their life um, transmitted and reported to others as the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has. The two attributes that the person needs to actualize in order to benefit from this science are love and veneration. Because love is what made them want to learn to know everything about their beloved. And veneration meant that they saw everything in his life as something to be venerated and something to be held in high regard. Nothing was seen as to be small or something that can be overlooked. Everything was see, is seen to be something of immense value. فَكَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ لَا يُوْجَدُ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ شَيْءٌ مَثَلًا بَسِيطٌ أَوْ صَغِيرٌ أَوْ لَا حَاجَةَ لَهُ and they, so they, they, in their estimation, in their perception, they, they knew that nothing in the Prophet's life was small. يعرفون أن كل التفاتة لها سر ومعنى. 
They knew that every little thing had a secret in it and a meaning behind it. They realized that his silence had a secret, his speech had a secret. And they knew that his movements and every stillness all had an immense secret. Even in this gen we even us in this generation نكتشف كثير من الفوائد التي تترتب على بعض السنن البسيطة جدا في حياة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Are still discovering secrets pertaining to the Prophet's way of life صلى الله عليه وسلم. فهناك آداب في النوم وفي الطعام وفي الشرب يأتي اليوم علم الطب ليرشدنا أن هذا مفيد جدا للإنسان. So there are things to do with how he drank and how he ate and how he slept, which even medical science today can uncover for us some of the benefits of. And so there are some who when these when these things come to light, when these discoveries come to light that cast that bring light bring in fresh understanding of, of certain things the Prophet did, these things increase them in faith. And there are some whose faith is already firm, so these things don't, don't do, are neither here nor there in that regard, with regard to their faith, but only just make them, make them happier to hear. ومن تعظيم الصحابة أنهم نقلوا كل شيء رأوه وسمعوه بحب وبتعظيم لرسول الله. And the companions transmitted and disseminated everything they knew of the Prophet's life صلى الله عليه وسلم with love and veneration. فمثلا تذكر أحد الصحابيات قالت نظرت إلى قدم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فرأيت سبابته أطول من إبهامه ونقل لنا أهل الحديث هذا هذه الرواية. So he said one of the female companions said my eyes fell upon the Prophet's feet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I saw that his second toe was bigger than, than, the, than the, the large toe was longer than the, than the large toe فلما ذكرت هذه الرواية مرة في الدرس فأخرج الناس أرجلهم كل واحد ينظر هل فيه شيء شابه رسول الله and he said when I mentioned this in one of, my, in one of the sessions people started people pulled their feet out and started seeing if their feet were similar to the Prophet's in that way فيسعد الإنسان إذا اكتشف في نفسه أي شيء يشابه رسول الله. So the person becomes happy when he sees anything in himself that is similar to the messenger of Allah. وكان كنا مرة في طائرة مع وكان بجنبي شخص رجل فسأل الم الموظفة المضيفة هذه سألها عن اسمها ثم استحى لما رآني بجانبه استحى قال العفو أنا يعني هذه عادة عندي أنني أتفاعل بالاسم الجميل وقلت له هذه سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فتعجب وقال بالله ما أعرف لكن اليوم أسعدتني لما أخبرتني بأنها سنة لرسول الله He said one time I was on a plane and, and the man next to me asked the air hostess what her name was and then he noticed me next to him and he felt a bit ashamed, so he, he explained why. And he said to me, I only ask because I actually take a, a glad tiding if someone has an, a name that has a good meaning. And that's the only reason I asked. And, he sa and I said to him, there's nothing wrong with that, the Messenger of God used to do the same thing. And he said, you made me happy telling me the Messenger of God used to do the same thing. فإنه صلى الله عليه وسلم كان دائما في السفر يسأل الناس الذين يجدهم في الطريق عن أسمائهم وكان يتفاءل بالاسم الجميل. said so when the Prophet ﷺ was traveling, ﷺ he'd ask people he met along the way their names because if their names had a good meaning he'd find a glad tiding in that. وكذلك لو تأملنا في حياتنا لوجدنا لو كثير من الأمور التي يمكن أن نشابه فيها رسول الله وهي بسيطة علينا لكن كنا نفتقر إلى النية الصالحة فقط. 
said that if we investigate our own lives, we'll find certain things that we do are already in harmony with what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But we are missing out having the intention of emulating the Prophet in doing those things, even though we do them already. ولهذا في كماله صلى الله عليه وسلم وفي عظمته وفي جلاله إذا أحببناه حبا يجعلنا لا نستطيع أن نتأخر عن البحث عن أخباره وتعظيما يجعلنا نعظم كل أخباره لو اتصفنا بهذه الصفتين فبمجرد أن نقرأ كتاب واحد في الشمائل سنحصل منه كثيرا من الفوائد والعلوم so if we, if we go with love to hear, hear news about him and emulate him in it and venerate him in doing so and see his greatness and perfection, then by reading just one of those books, we can gain huge benefits. Because everyone who is in love wants to know the object of their love. الآن الإنسان لو كان شخص مثلا يحب هذا النوع من الأجهزة مثلا سنجد دائما يبحث عن كل جديد يصدر عنه وأي معلومة جديدة عن هذا الجهاز دائما يحب أن يتعرف عليها لكن لا تهمه بقية الأجهزة لأنه يحب هذا فكيف بمن أحب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم؟ even if you see an example, an example is if you see someone who loves a particular phone or particular piece of equipment. That person will, will want to know about everything there is to know about that piece of equipment, will want to know any new gadgets that come out for that piece of equipment, any new developments, and to the detriment of other things, he won't, he won't care about similar things or something else. And he said, so how, if that's just in something that small, how about when it's to do with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? وَكُلَّمَا أَرَادُوا أَنْ يَسْتَصْدِرُوا أَشْيَاءَ جَدِيدًا أَوْ مَعْلُومَاتِ جَدِيدًا فَإِنَّهُمْ يَعْمَلُونَ لِذَلِكَ لِعَايَاتِ وَالنَّاسِ يَتَجَمَّعُونَ وَيَتَجَمْهَرُونَ وَيَبْحَثُونَ عَنْ هَذِهِ الْمَعْلُومَاتِ الْجَدِيدَةِ وَاللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بِنَفْسِهِ تَوَلَّى دَعْوَتَنَا لِلتَّعَرُّفِ عَلَى حَبِيبِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ When these new pieces of movement come out, people make them set up promotional campaigns for people to come to know these things. And how about when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was God that made him known to us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. الذي يجعلنا كل خبر نسمعه عن نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم نرى أنه شيء كبير جدا وعظيم جدا. Reverence or veneration allows us to see that anything we hear about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is something we give gravity to and reverence to. كنا مرة في جالسين مع شيخنا الحبيب عمر بن حفيظ فقال لنا سألنا سؤال ولا هل أحد منكم يحب أن يعرج به إلى العرش؟ One time we were sitting in the presence of our master Habib Umar bin Hafid and he asked those present he said is there anyone amongst you who wants for his soul for his soul to ascend to be just to be below the throne the throne the imperial throne. لا شك أن هذا سؤال غريب. No doubt it's a strange question. هذه كرامة عظيمة إذا إنسان عرج به إلى العرش. And it's a great miracle if a person or a great um, breaking of norm if the person was allowed to ascend to be below the throne of God. ثم أقسم بالله وقال والله لسنة واحدة من سنن رسول الله تحيونها خير لكم من أن تعرجون إلى العرش ألف مرة. He said, I swear to you, if you were able to bring back, to revive one sunnah of the Prophet of Allah, it's better for you than ascending to the heavens a thousand times. Because the Prophet Muhammad is more beloved to God than everything. And his sunnah, his way of, his way of life, brings you close to God to the point that God loves you. So, and he said, can anything else be measured against this in the world? And that's why the people of sagacity, wisdom, came to the understanding that there's a secret in that, 
and they spent their whole lives going into his, delving into his life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and extracting from it because it's like an inexhaustible ocean which never runs out of jewels. He said that the person who holds the Prophet in that reverence and that regard and everything he did in that regard will be able to draw new insights from, every, from hearing the same story about the Prophet at another time. Every time he hears the same story, he'll draw fresh insights from it. فإنني كلما قرأت كتابا في شمائله صلى الله عليه وسلم كأنما أقرأه لأول مرة لأنني أستفيد منه معلومات جديدة ما كنت أعرفها حتى الكتاب نفسه ربما أكرره فأستخرج من ذلك فوائد غريبة وجديدة تعلم أن هذا البحر بحر واسع جدا. He said that's when a person does that then every time they read. That a particular book, they receive fresh insights and a fresh way of looking at it. He said, myself, said, sometimes I will read those books and I will see something new that I didn't see this at the time when I read them last, the time before. so, so he said, it's like a vast ocean and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said May Allah beautify a face of someone who hears what I've said and disseminates it in the same manner that he heard it because perchance the person hearing those words will have a greater capacity to, under, to, 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 to take them on board or to understand them than the person who actually disseminated them to him. Because what he's saying is that over time, as people's understandings develop, they'll see fresh and new insights that the people before them didn't see. وَلَقَدْ عَكَفْتُ عَلَىٰ كُتُبِ الشَّمَائِلِ سَنَوَاتِ كَثِيرًا وَكَتَبْتُ فِيهَا وَاسْتَخْرَجْتُ كَثِيرًا مِنْ فَوَائِدِهَا فَمَا وَجَدْتُ أَنْفَعَ فِي الْحَيَاةِ مِنْ شَمَائِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أَبَدًا هذه, هذه فائدة مجرب Said I myself have tried and tested this I've spent, I've spent years of focusing on the Prophet's life, studying the Prophet's life and delving into it and I was able to write new things and was able to write things about it and every time I, I went in and I researched more I find new fresh insights so this is the this is someone talking to you from his own experience it's been tried and tested من الأخذ من هذا البحر العظيم الذي اغترف منه الصالحون قال الإمام البوصيري وكلهم من رسول الله ملتمس غرفا من البحر أو رشفا من الديم إشارة إلى أن الأنبياء ثم الأولياء جميعهم يأخذون من بركة رسول الله محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونسأل الله أن يجعل حبنا وإياكم من أعظم هذه الحضور he said, and he said, I hope that we can all benefit from this. As Imam Busiri said in one of his, of the lines of the Burda, the... the and he said, so, he said, Imam Busiri said in the, in his ode of the mantle, on the mantle of the Prophet Wasallam, and every one of them receives from the Messenger of Allah, whether a scoop from the ocean, or a, or, or, a, or a drink from the, from the waters. So meaning that even all the Messenger of Allah were the recipients of what they received through the Messenger of Allah. So shall we open it up for Q&A?